If you watch my previous videos, you will notice that I use Hypermesh in almost every simulation setup. Hypermesh is an industry standard CAE software. It is the most widely used preprocessor and is the number one preference for meshing critical finite element models. The overall response I got for my videos was very positive, but many viewers reached out to me saying that they were having difficulty in using Hypermesh. With little or no prior experience using this software, it can be very, very difficult for anyone to perform even basic operations in the software. And trust me, I've been in that place myself. It took me months to figure out how to perform the first simulation. And that brings me to the main objective of this video. I will specifically focus on explaining the various features and different tabs and panels in Hypermesh. I'm sure this will get you a better understanding of the software and make it easier for you to perform your very first simulation using Hypermesh. Once you open Hypermesh, this is what you will see in your application window. The user interface can be divided into four main sections. The browser area, entity editor, panel area, and the graphics area. Each of these four sections has a particular function and when used together, we can set up any simulation with ease. Now let's take a look at each of these sections in detail. The browser area is basically an organized list of all the items being used in the setup. There are many types of browsers that can be loaded in this section out of which the most important is the model browser. This is where we create and manage all the components, materials, properties, loads, control cards and all other necessary settings like curves and load steps. We can create new items in the model browser. Right click, create and select the required item. We can also delete unwanted items. Every item is coupled with masking buttons. By using these buttons, we can toggle the visibility of component geometry as well as the mesh. This is visible in the graphics area. Just like the model browser, several other browsers can be managed in the browser area. As you go on performing different simulations using Hypermesh, you will learn more about other useful browsers. Now we will take a look at the second section, that is the entity editor. This section is completely dependent on the browser area. It shows the details of every selection made in the model browser. For example, if we click on any component in the model browser, its details will be displayed in the entity editor. Selecting a material will show its properties. We can also edit these details as per our requirement. The entity editor reduces the time required to set up any simulation by allowing quicker editing of details. We can easily edit card images, material properties, load values and additional details required to effectively run a simulation. Next up is the panel area. This section is the crux of Hypermesh. This is what defines Hypermesh, a complete collection of all the tools and features available in this software. This area is divided into seven main panels, each of which controls specific design parameters. The geometry panel is a collection of all the tools required for creating and editing geometry. It includes nodes, points, lines, surfaces, as well as solid creation and modification tools. The 1D panel encompasses all the tools required for creating one-dimensional elements. We can also create rigids using this panel. The 2D panel can be used for meshing of surface geometries. Several options and meshing methods are available to get optimum quality 2D mesh. Similarly, the 3D panel can be used for generating three-dimensional mesh types like tetra mesh and hex mesh. The analysis panel is where we create and modify the loads and constraints. We can also set up contacts and control cards to define the simulation process. This is from where we actually run our simulation after all the setup is done. 
The tools panel contains miscellaneous features which help to simplify the setup process. These include the translate, rotate, reflect, organize and many more useful features. Finally, the post panel is where we can review input and result files. Using this panel, we can view simulation results directly inside Hypermesh. But usually, it is preferred to use Hyperview for post processing. The fourth section of the user interface is where we actually view our geometry and mesh. This is called the graphics area. All the editing and modifications performed using the panels are reflected here. Along the boundary of the graphics area, there are several controls to mask, isolate, find and number the components in the visible model. The visibility of model can be controlled using the shortcuts provided along the periphery of the graphics area. The simultaneous use of these four sections allows us to set up and run any simulation in Hypermesh with minimum difficulty. Along with this, there are several other browsers and tabs listed in the ribbon which is placed on the top. These can be used to perform specific applications in complex simulations. Learning to use Hypermesh is not easy, but the key is to not give up. It is very frustrating in the beginning, but when you see the results of your first simulation, it just feels amazing. If you are interested in learning how to perform analysis using Hypermesh, do watch my other videos which I will be linking over here. Be sure to hit that subscribe button. Click the notification bell to stay updated.